In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate using Photoshop. What you're going to need to do is have an object. And in general, you want to make sure that you have cropped that object out so that uh, it is just a standalone object and on its own layer. You're also going to want to make sure that that object is a smart object. If your object is rasterized, then come to convert to smart object. And if, uh, and if it's already a smart object, it'll have this icon telling us that it's a smart object and it won't give us the smart object uh, option. It'll only give us the option to rasterize it since those are opposite of each other. Then once you have your object, you're gonna come up to window in the top bar and you're gonna ask it to put the timelines on. So the timeline is how we animate. Timeline mode will pop up with this information here at the bottom. To be able to animate, we're going to have to change what mode it's in or define what mode we want it to be in. And it gives us two different ones if we click this drop menu, the timeline and the frame by frame animation. Frame by frame is good if you're gonna draw each, uh, each thing or move each thing bit by bit. Video timeline is very good if you are going to use tweening actions, which are auto animation uh, actions. And that's what we're going to use. So select video timeline, and then click on this button, which doesn't really look like a button. And that'll give you this timeline here. It shows at the top how many frames uh, uh, it's going by, 10 frames per second, 20 frames per second, one whole second, um, as well as what layer uh, is, uh, is existing and how long that layer is uh, lasting for. Now, part of what we did was make sure that it, it is a smart object. So that when we come to the drop menu to that layer, we get our various uh, various options. And that'll allow us to set down keyframes uh, so that we can animate between our keyframes. So our first thing that we wanna do uh, to make this move is we want to set down a keyframe for a transform. Um, on the timeline marker, we're gonna have it start at the uh, beginning. I'm going to click the little stopwatch to set down a keyframe. And we can see that there is one keyframe there. Then I'm going to move the timeline marker somewhere further in this uh, whole thing. And I think I want to add it to the very end. And then I'll come back to here and I will click the little um, the keyframe diamond. And we can see that it'll set up a secondary keyframe. So right now that hasn't done anything. So if I come over to uh, my play settings and I press play, we can see that the timeline marker is gonna move, but my apple doesn't move at all. And sometimes that'll go really slow the first time. After the first time, it usually speeds up and we can see down here that it's showing its frames per second and it's at optimal frames per second, but it might go a little bit slower uh, depending on the speed of your computer and how many layers you have. So I'm gonna pause it since it's not doing anything. Now, what we want to do is we want to alter what is happening between keyframe one and then keyframe two. I'm going to move the timeline marker over to the second keyframe. I'm going to make sure that the marker is uh, lines up with the keyframe. And then what I'm going to do is since this is a smart object and allow us to make changes without making changes to the initial file. And it says that we are adjusting the tr uh, via transform. So it'll animate between position A to position B if we use the transform tool. So I'm gonna come up to edit and I'm gonna use free transform, but you can use whichever transform version that you want. And I'm gonna use free transform and I'm gonna move the apple over here. I'm gonna press okay. So now we have a position one. And if I move the cursor, we can see that it's auto animating to position uh, uh, to position one from position two. And if I press play, you can see that it's going to slide across my screen because that's where I, I have asked it to exist. And I can pause this. I can move this cursor over so it gets to that point quicker. As well as I can click on that anchor and I can delete it. And the only position that it remembers was position one. I can also, I'm going to create another, I'm going to edit transform, move it. 
I can do other transform actions like make it larger as well as like spin it or rotate it. And then when I play this, you can see that it'll animate between those two different actions. I can also come to somewhere in the middle or any other place that I want, and I can add another keyframe. And at that keyframe, I can maybe change up the positions and it'll it'll factor that in into its different uh if different motions so it's moving from position one to new position two to then position three which drastically changes so that is how we use the timelines in the windows to animate as well as using smart objects to auto animate using the tweening actions